Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing now with the transit series. Transit of moon. What does it mean when moon is transiting a particular house, a particular, or on top of a particular planet in your birth chart? You know, what does it mean? How is it different from the transit of other planets? You know, like we discussed about Rahu, Mercury, Jupiter. So now it's the turn of the moon. So we know whenever we see, you know, a moon transit videos, they're very short, like two, two and a half days, you know, but but what does it exactly mean when you say, you know, that moon is transiting this house? <clears throat> because there are other planets like Mercury, Venus, who also have very short transits. Of course, they are much longer than the moon. And we always see that in traditional Jyotish, uh, whenever you speak of nakshatras, they always say, that look at the nakshatra of the moon. So wherever your moon is placed in your original birth chart, that is known as your Janma nakshatra. And that is where the calculation of the Vimshotri Dasha starts. Okay, So moon transit is very interesting because it can tell us a lot about ourselves rather than the world. Okay, So that's exactly what we are going to discuss today. And as usual, if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up at the end and share it with somebody who is interested to know what's a moon transit, okay? And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. For consultations, my website is down below. All right. So, quick recap. What's the moon? Moon represents mind, emotions, emotional intelligence. <laughs> also, our ability to reciprocate uh, or rather accept love and reciprocate love. Okay, that is what is the moon. Moon is like, basically, see, what is the sun? The sun represents our kingdom. Okay, the things that you own, like this webcam, this iMac, this microphone. Oops, can you see this? No. <laughs> and then this mobile, then this, you know, external hard disk, whatever, this, this mouse. These are like, these are like entities in my kingdom. I own them. I am I am the king, right? <laughs> Everybody is a king at a tiny level, okay? At some level or the other. So that's what is the sun, the things that we own in this world and the things that we think we own. And yeah, it's not just what we own. It's also what we think we own, okay? Sometimes people believe... Oh, this country is ours. This this state is ours. You know? So it's like you own it at a subtle level. You don't own it only like physically, literally, but you still own it. Okay. So that's what is the sun. But then what's the moon? The moon represents um, how you feel about the things that you own. In short, that's it. That is why the moon represents happiness because... Happiness does not necessarily always comes from owning things. Well, yes, happiness do comes from owning things. Uh, it's not wrong, but more than owning something, it's like how do you feel about what you own? So, for example, you know, uh, if you have, if you buy a new iPhone, iPhone 10, 12, 14, 15, 20, whatever it is, new in the market. <laughs> So suppose you own it. Today is the first day. Okay, you own you own the iPhone. So what happens? Your ownership has started. Okay, but today you are very happy. Okay. Oh, it feels nice. You know, you will you will take it and put it into your cheeks. You know, you will do this. You will do that. Oh, it's so nice. You know, it's very nice. It looks so nice. You know, oh, wow, it's so nice. Silver, gray, black, whatever. Uh, oh, wow, it's so amazing. You know, I, I'm getting this high for 24 hours. But then gradually what happens? Mm, your That, that feel-good factor keeps diminishing. Okay. So after one month, or maybe one month is a bit less, you know, maybe after six months, you are at the same level of happiness which uh, you would have been with any other phone, okay? In general, you know, it can vary five months, six months, one year, or maybe f with an iPhone, you need uh, one year to go into that level, you know, but eventually you can say after two years, you will be least interested if this is a Oppo phone or an iPhone or Android or whatever it is, you know. Why? Because now you do not feel that great about that anymore, 
although your ownership is still there, I still own this phone, right? Nobody can, uh, nobody has taken this phone away from me, but what has changed? My feeling towards this phone has changed. Have you heard people saying, oh, I don't feel the same anymore about you? <laughs> I used to, but I don't feel it anymore. <laughs> That's what is the moon, okay? So the moon is very interesting because it is the most important planet in Vedic astrology. It has the power to make your life into a heavenly abode or it has the power to wreak havoc in your life because it is the only planet which can change everything in your life. Why? Because it can change your feelings. <laughs> See, the sun, like I have this flute, you know, oops, can you see this? Okay, this flute, you know, you can play it like this, okay? <laughs> so, but I have, this is like the sun, okay? This is not literally the sun, but I can own this today and I can break this tomorrow. So I hope it doesn't. <laughs> this is my water bottle, okay? I can take this or I can choose to break it. When I break this, this is not there with me anymore. Okay. But with this mobile, it's the same with this mobile. I can break it or I can keep it. But this is all represented by the sun. And on the other hand, we have the moon. The moon is like, oh, I have this. I can play this. I can play this from all sides. Okay. But I don't want to play this. Okay. So it is as good as this flute is not there. <laughs> it's as good as it doesn't exist for me. Or maybe in extreme cases, uh, it is causing pain to me. I, I'm, uh, I, I feel disgusted when I see something, you know, like uh, it could be anything which you have, but you don't want it. So the moon has the power to destroy things even without it being destroyed that that is why the moon is so powerful because the moon it represents the mind you know chandrama manaso jataha this it is the filter with which we see things okay oh by the way this video was about moon transits right why are we discussing about the moon because this is exactly what happens when moon transits occur our feelings keep changing actually okay which means we, uh, whenever moon transits uh, a particular house, a particular zodiac, a particular nakshatra, then what happens is we become more sensitive towards those things, okay? So, for example, uh, I have this flute, okay? This this is a normal uh, normal flute, but suppose this is, this is lying in my table from, from, from one or two months, but now what happens? On the day when moon will transit my fifth house from the ascendant, not from the moon, from the ascendant, when your moon is transiting in the fifth, then what will happen? I will not just see this flute. Other days, other days I may just see this and I may just pass it. But when I'm the moon is transiting fifth from my ascendant, whenever I see this, you know, whenever I'm seeing this, then the mind interprets this as something very valuable. Okay. So, which means I may want to play it, okay. Or when I see this, I may feel, oh, I don't know how to play this. Bad. But this will impact me, okay. Either I know how to play this or I don't know how to play this. But this will impact me, which means I will be more susceptible, more vulnerable, or I'll be much more affected by things related to fifth house, which is creativity or... Uh, it could be anything, you know, drawing, painting or anything, singing, dancing or what, whatever creative talents you have, you may be more affected. And if you on those two, two, two and a half days, on those days, if you know how to use that instrument, you know how to play that, then you will be very, very, very happy. You know, you're the people around you will tell you, hey, what's happening? You are so happy, you know. Uh, but you will say, oh, yeah, I have this flute and I know how to play this. I know how to play the guitar, the piano or whatever. But if you can't, then uh, it will wreak havoc in your life. Okay, so therefore, moon transits are very important because it keeps changing every two, two and a half days. And they keep telling us, how do we feel about this world? Okay, so 
therefore, whenever moon is transiting in a particular house, you have to realize that it is not about that thing, that house, the materials. It is about how you feel about them. That is what is the moon transit. Okay. So, uh, whenever moon transits, you know, sometimes the 12th house, you may be tempted to buy luxuries. Not because you don't have them, but what you are actually doing is uh, you are buying uh, that feeling. You are buying that feel good factor when you get, when you initially buy some luxury product. Okay. So it is not that you are you are missing that. Of course, uh, if, if you have some luxury product, which is like 15, 20 years old, you know, then of course the product itself may not have any intrinsic value or charm. But I'm talking of things in general, you know, you purchased iPhone, it's like one or two years old um, and now moon is transiting. Every month moon transits your 12th house, right? Once uh, and then you feel ah, maybe, you know, not the iPhone, but I need something else. Okay, so... When moon is transiting a particular house, it is not about the house. It is about how you feel about the house. Okay. So therefore, uh, the Acharyas explain, uh, Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, like Arjuna also says that uh, the mind is more difficult to control than the wind. Okay. Vayoreva Sudushkaram, he says this. Okay. Arjuna is telling this. Imagine the, the most phenomenally powerful, most smart, handsome, intelligent, powerful, competent, skilled, the best diplomat, you know, he's like the best of the best. He is telling, you know, Krishna says in the Gita, I among Pandavas, I am Arjun. He does not say I am Yudhishthir or Bhima. He says among Pandavas, I am Arjun. Okay. Now this Arjuna is telling, oh my God, I cannot control the mind. I can control the winds, you know. Can you control the wind? What happens when there is like a thunder, lightning or you know, tor tornado or whatever? Um, tsunami, what happens? You know, it wrecks havoc, you know, like uh, everything is destroyed. But imagine Arjuna is telling, I can control the winds, you know, who is there? Can any prime minister or president, you know, anybody? Can prime minister Narendra Modi, can um, can President Biden, can Xi Jinping, can President Putin, can anybody claim or not one, can all of these together, the whole world's energies, they come together and they say, no, we will stop the wind, we will stop the tornado, we will stop the tsunami, you know, okay. can they say that? No. But Arjuna says, I can control the wind. He says this, but I cannot control the mind. The mind is so difficult to control, okay, the mind... Yeah, it's so difficult. <laughs> okay. So therefore, Lord Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita how to control the mind. No, there are two ways. You know, one is practice and detachment. Okay. The more you are attached to certain things, the more you will have difficulty controlling the mind. And you may say, but I don't have detachment. You know, what should I do? You know, main kya karo? Nahi hai mere paas. Nahi hai to nahi hai kya? No, it's not like that. You have to practice detachment. Okay. So, uh, if you feel that you are extremely attached to something, then uh, maybe you can try, you know, once a week to not use that thing at all and focus on other things in life. And then you will realize, oh yeah, you know, maybe once a week, then gradually twice a week, you know, like for example, I know people who are addicted to their smartphones, you know, I've told them <laughs> that if you are considerably addicted, then maybe try to not use the smartphone in the first hour of your life, you know, so you get up at 6 a.m., then 6 to 7, you don't use your smartphone, you know, you do some exercise, you do some chanting of mantras, you take bath, you uh, re read the scriptures, you know, you do something like that and you avoid the phone for the first hour of the day. If it's very extreme, then first three hours of your day, you get up at 6, no phones till 9, okay. And if it's very, very, very extreme, then maybe you use your phone like uh, in slots, you know, in four hours of the day, you know, like for example, nine to 10, then yeah, 12 to one, then three to five, and then seven to eight, something like this, you know, and only in slots you use it. Otherwise, uh, your attachments will grow. Okay, so therefore, uh, 
please do spiritual practices if you feel that controlling the mind is very difficult, which I'm sure you feel because I feel it. Arjuna also feels it. I'm sure you will also feel it, right? So therefore, please chant this mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. If you chant this mantra in a mala 108 times, then uh, it is very beneficial for you to control the mind with this mantra, okay? Because we are, by this mantra, we are invoking the blessings of Vas Vasudev, who is the son of Vasudev, who is Lord Sri Krishna himself, right? None other than Krishna himself. So when you chant this mantra, you will feel that it's easier to control the mind because uh, Lord Krishna represents the Vishnu Avatara, which is connected uh, to the mind. Okay. So therefore, please read the scriptures, learn how to control the mind, you know, do meditation, pranayam, chant mantras, read the Bhagavad Gita, read the Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, in the Bhagavad Gita, there are a lot of different things which are spoken in context of the mind, you know. Like Dhyan Yoga, then uh, there's Ashtang Yoga, then Bhakti Yoga. So if you are serious about controlling the mind, then please uh, read all this and benefit yourself. Otherwise, you know, whenever Moon is transiting a particular house, um, you will feel that, you know, you are too attached regarding that house and you will always want new and new things, okay, newer and newer things. And by that, what will happen is you will realize that you are never satisfied in life. You are always miserable. You are unhappy. You are desperate. You are you are despicably attached. You know you are like so attached. It is like despicable sometimes. Okay, it's pitiable. You know it's it's like uh, you, you will feel ashamed sometimes. You know, and it is not just two things. You know, it could be anything. Uh, the most primary attachment that people have in this world is you know sex life basically, right? A desire to indulge with the opposite sex, you know, at a subtle level, at a gross level. So, because of that, people watch adult material, uh, pornography and all this, you know, which is, which actually degrades your life more and more. And then what happens is your brain uh, does not secrete these uh, pleasure hormones and it secretes, uh, it needs more and more higher, uh, what do I say, higher doses of enjoyment to secrete them. Know, dopamine and all this and then what happens your your dopamine receptors are dead <laughs> and then normal life seems very boring okay so uh, one should always plan uh, their day and make sure they have uh, well engaged they are well engaged uh, they have fulfilling engagements and then by that they will realize that uh, they can to a large extent control the mind okay Otherwise, uh, yeah, the mind is very difficult to control. Arjuna is telling this. When Arjuna is telling something is difficult, it is really difficult. Okay, he has, he, in this same earthly body, he has gone to the Swargaloka. He has stayed there, okay, with Indra and he has uh, fought with Lord Shiva himself and Shiva has given him the Pashupatastra. So when... Arjuna is telling something is difficult. Oh my God, it is it is for us, it is always almost like it is impossible, okay? <laughs> so do not take the mind lightly. Otherwise, you know, the mind will make a flute out of you, okay? Some, day, some days it will tell you, some days it will say, some days okay, it will make a scam out of you, okay? So don't let the mind make a scam out of you, okay? Thank you very much. And if you have not watched my video on moon remedies, you will find it. You know, just type exotic astrology moon remedies. You will surely find it. Okay. Thank you very much. Please take care. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you know, whose mind is not controlled and how should they control the mind. And if you want a consultation, my website is down below. If you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Okay. Thank you very much. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will for sure find him.